Sorry I'm late. It's an important day, so I wanted to make sure that we had everything organized. Appreciate you all being here. Now, I know that you've been paying a lot of attention to what's been going on in the last week or so. So I just have a few things that I want to talk about. It's very important that uh, I get my story out. And then after that, we'll have a few questions and answers. All of you know that I'm a Tea Party. And I'm the first Tea Party that I know of that's been elected chairman of the Republican Party in this nation. While I am a Tea Party, however, I'm also a decades-long Reagan Republican. And I'm happy to see the new imagery, especially the young people, that have been attracted to our message at this critical time in our history. The Republican Party is growing because Tea Partiers are attracted to the Republican message of small government and respect for the free market and individual liberty. The State House is full of freshman Republicans. For that matter, so is the State Senate. Growing pains and conflict are bound to occur. But it's a shame to see the false accusations and the infighting on such a spectacular scale. Regardless of these short-term difficulties, the struggle between the Tea Party and the establishment must be resolved positively so our party will be far stronger. I have pledged to unify and be the bridge between the longtime Republicans and the newer liberty-minded Republicans. As we have watched the country head into the wrong direction, and dive into economic decline, the liberty movement will only grow stronger and increase in size. Those who seek to remove me from my duly elected position must recognize that I represent a movement, a political movement, much larger than myself. I plead with them not to pick this fight. It will only damage the party and cause unnecessary division. One of the major goals of my chairmanship is to help this party move into the future. But sadly, there are some who are still stuck in the past. I want to take a moment to address my supporters, some of whom have been exceptionally passionate in, the coming, in coming to my defense. I ask them to listen to me and to pledge themselves to joining this debate in a positive way. I don't and won't tolerate name-calling or personal attacks or lies and innuendo. That's unacceptable. And now I'm going to address directly some of the criticisms and accusations that have been levied against me. First, I've been called a poor fundraiser. In my defense, I'm going to provide you with some basic figures from the Federal Election Commission regarding the finances of the New Hampshire GOP. In the first half of 2011, the party has raised over $190,000 in total federal receipts not including transfers from affiliated party committees. Just seven months into my tenure, I have had the second best first two fundraising quarters in the last eight years. And I've even surpassed the first two quarters in 2010 in a federal election year. Not bad in the middle of a recession. Our fundraising efforts are improving with assistance from our new finance chairman, Bill Binney and also my own self-improvement and gained experience. Mr. Benny stepped up to, the, to aid the party, and he is a true patriot for doing so. Our party should welcome his involvement and his support. In fact, our largest, <laughs> in fact, our largest fundraiser of the year is scheduled for this September, with our special guest being Virginia Governor Bob McDonald. Everyone is paid, everyone has been paid, and we're retiring debts left over from the past few years that have totaled over $100,000. These are serious debts that haven't been addressed but will be. One of my commitments is to leave this party debt free when my service is complete. As a result, our cash on hand is a bit lower right now as we clear out those old debts, most of which are related to the phone jamming scandal, legal fees, and penalties from 2004, as well as an expensive audit required due to inaccurate Federal Election Commission filings in 2007 and 2008. Secondly, I want to address the recent losses in special elections, which have been quite unfortunate. I've come to believe that these losses are to be expected. We have such super majorities in both chambers that all the incentives to win are aligned against us. Nevertheless, we have fought hard 
expended resources, and we will continue to do so. But we can't change the simple fact that these minor victories mean much more to the Democratic base, and they're going all out to win. I encourage our activists and our supporters across the state to work much harder, and I encourage our rank and file voters of the importance of voting, even in the dog days of summer, when they may not see the immediate value. I would also note that one major problem in our political efforts has been corrected with the termination of our previous executive director. It is important that as chairman, I have a dynamic, loyal, and experienced manager working full-time at the party headquarters. It's not uncommon to see turnover at the party, and happily, our organization is moving forward and accepting resumes to fill that position as quickly as possible, along with a new position we are creating for political director. We have created a search committee made up of well-respected, long-time Republican leaders, and I'm confident their efforts will produce some excellent new and talented individuals to join our existing staff. Finally, I want to address the issue of this petition for the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. All I can do is repeat what I have already said, which is that it was a momentary mistake because I thought it was for an individual of being on the ballot. It was corrected immediately. It doesn't exist. It's not going to be submitted. Some Democrats took a picture of me with a clipboard that day, and then they sent that out. It's a shame to see so many good Republicans engaging in this kind of gotcha politics. I believe in our democracy and ballot access, and my initial reaction was to say, you know, the more the merrier. That's not a terribly misguided thing to do or a reason to question my loyalty to the Republican Party, and certainly not grounds for removal. Now, there have been a lot of mistruths regarding my relationship with Bill O'Brien and federal de the federal delegation. It's been widely reported that the Speaker, along with Jennifer Horn, visited me and asked me to resign. At the same meeting, it was revealed to me that the, RG the RGA was prepared to cut a check for $100,000 to the New Hampshire GOP should I step down, and the federal delegation would contribute some funds to the New Hampshire state of New Hampshire GOP as well, should I resign. I'm not going to stand for those kinds. That's not the kind of deal-making that Jack Kimball's used to, uh, and, and I don't think the voters are going to stand for it either. And they deserve to know the truth. I never spoke of this meeting. I never talked about it. We were asked not to talk about it, and I didn't. The only, I only confirmed the report when others let the story out. To this moment, none of our federal legislators have spoken to me on this matter, and I have had no communication whatsoever with the RGA. All that being said, I am defending the first in the nation primary, I am facilitating a neutral primary, I am bringing new blood to our organization, and I am committed to moving forward as the bridge between the past and the future of the Republican Party. And now, I'll take any questions you might have. Jack, at this uh, meeting that you had with Bill O'Brien and Jennifer Warren, the discussion of $100,000, Tea Party are sending out information that compares that to a form of bribery they're offering a benefit to you as a party official. Are you going to pursue any sort of bribery charges? Or is anybody going to investigate this? No. Just going to drop it? Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it speaks for itself. Okay. Anyone else? Jack, we talked about the special elections. Uh, I want to clear this up. Uh, the results of the special elections. Do you believe that the results of those had anything to do with some of the aggressive uh, or not tactics, but aggressive moves on the part of the legislature up here in Congress, not so much in organizational skills. No, I, I, you know, I firmly, and, and nothing has ever been said by me with regard to that. Um, I, I feel very strongly that my staff uh, did everything they could possibly do. I told them in a meeting the next day that I don't think you could have done anything more. It was no blame at all. Uh, I think, especially this, this uh, most recent uh, special election, uh, we had more boots on the ground. We had more people making phone calls than ever. Uh, we had great support. Uh, we had seven mailings. Uh, we, we did everything humanly possible. Uh, and the results are what they are. Why would signing the petition for an individual libertarian candidate, why should, why should people within the state committee find that acceptable? Well, first of all, the libertarian candidates, are they, they wind up being on the ballot, or they get right in opportunities. And, and, uh, what it turned out to be and, and was, was the party being on the ballot. I don't agree with that. I'm the state GOP chairman. 
And uh, once finding that out, in 24 hours, it was gone. So, you know, I don't think it's an issue. I really don't. Jack, following up on Tom's question just a second ago, how would you characterize that kind of deal making, as you put it? Talk about $100,000. Look, it's one thing to come and talk to me about issues that you may have concerns about with respect to how I'm performing or whatever. But I think everyone has realized, ever since I've been elected, there's been a continuous crescendo of criticism, innuendo, uh, misinformation that has been going out to the press. It's been nonstop. And it's culminating with this. I, I have to say that it's disheartening. It isn't why I wound up running for governor or this. I wound up running for governor because I believe in my country and that it's in trouble. I'm a patriot. It's the same reason I ran for this position, so that we could eliminate this kind of stuff. It doesn't have a place. It just doesn't have a place in this dialogue. We have got to come together as Republicans. We talk about a Big Ten. I'm talking about making certain that the same thing that happened last November 2nd happens in 2012. Well, how, Jack, how, how do you, you Jack, Sen this? Senator Kelly Ayotte released a letter today signed by 22 other executive committee members calling on you to quit. How are you going to be able to remain on unless you can't talk some of those people into not? There's a meeting, as you know, on September 1st. That's the, that meeting, and I called for this meeting. Uh, at that point, there will probably be a vote. But I will tell you this. I won't step down. I will go to that meeting. And they will look me in the eye, and they will vote. Obviously, whatever occurs at that point in time, I will respect. But I hope, I really do, and have faith that the majority of that equal will realize what's truly happening here, and vote conscience rather than politics. Well, I mean, how disillusioning is this? You obviously have the top elected officials within the Republican Party in the state saying that you need to go. I mean, how disillusioning is that? Well, it's very disappointed. And, and I have to be honest, my family has been affected by this. Uh, they know how hard I've worked and the effort I've put into this and the passion. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's disappointing to say the least because I've had a pretty good relationship. So this comes as quite a shock to me, but at the same time, people who know me know, and by the way, I just let you know that the name of my boat, which is an old 1986 C rate, is never quit. Why do you think it's intensified to this point, especially if you are, your role as you see it is to bridge the gap between the old and the new GOP? I think that you got a small core of folks uh, that, that truly weren't real happy that I got elected. I mean, it's a fact. And uh, it's sad, but I think part of this has brought us to this point. Um, and um, uh, we will see how this plays out. But let me say this. If I am voting, it is going to cause a fissure in this party that is going to open a wound that isn't going to heal real soon. This is the worst possible thing to happen at the worst possible time with the first nation primary coming up and the most important presidential election in our history. Do you feel this is being orchestrated somewhere, or is this some sort of grassroots, old-line Republican movement to get you out? Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know. You haven't thought about that? Have you met with Governor Sununu or have you talked to him? Why not? Why not? Well, listen, as far as I'm concerned, uh, and I was, I've been there, uh, you know, uh, you could have called me and talked to me. I, I, it, it works both ways, but I have not. Well, a lot of, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people uh, who, are, who support you believe that Governor Sununu has been actively trying to undermine you from the start. Do you believe that? That's not something, I mean, that's not something that's even been discussed. I, I absolutely would, would refrain from even in, intimating that. So I, that's not something that I have on myself, no. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you.